day for Pathways Foster Care Frequently Asked Questions webinar via Zoom. We, my name is Liz Thatch and I am Pathways Marketing and Fundraising Coordinator. Just a couple housekeeping things. Please use the chat feature at the bottom and ask, feel free to ask your questions. We're joined today by Patricia Lott, our recruitment director, and Eric Stuckey, our training manager, and then one of our very own foster parents, Olivia Cox, and she'll be able to do a firsthand perspective on what being a foster parent is like. And so, Pat, take it away. Hi, oh, well, good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for joining us. This is an exciting time for Pathway as we are offering remote training to become a licensed foster parent. So I'm the first stop in your journey when you've had it on your mind. A lot of people say it's mission driven. People will call me and say, you know, I've been thinking about this for a couple of years now, and now is the time I'm going to make the call. So you call me and we talk a little bit on the phone and I mail you out an information packet. And then from there, what we do is we would meet one on one. Right now we've been doing it uh, over FaceTime and sometimes just over a phone conference until we can meet again in person. Talk a little bit about the process and what it takes to move forward to be a licensed home. And right now, today, uh, early June, our next class does begin June 18th. And once again, that will be a Zoom training. And I'm gonna let Eric talk about that in a minute. Uh, but I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to talk to you about the steps to become a foster parent and please feel free to reach out. Eric, did you want to talk a little bit about the upcoming training? Yep, absolutely. Uh, hey guys, thanks for checking this out and taking the time. Um, like Patricia said, our next round of pre-service training begins a week from today. And the classes are primarily going to be Tuesday and Thursday evenings this time around. Uh, we do have a couple of odds and ends, you know, a, a Wednesday morning and also a Saturday morning here and there. Uh, we understand that a lot of people are uh, back to work or not as uh, flexible as it was a couple months ago when we started doing online training. So we're kind of returning a little bit uh, back to our normal format, which is Tuesday and Thursday evenings. Uh, but it's on Zoom still. Uh, so if you're watching this, then you... Uh, got it all figured out already, you know where to be for our trainings. And uh, you can take these classes at home and uh, there is some additional flexibility being able to do the training at home. Um, this is our third round of online training. And uh, so we, we're, we're not new to this process. We're, we've got a lot of the details ironed out and they've been really good training. So I was, uh, I've been really encouraged by the discussion we've been able to have and uh, just the time spent with our parents going through and um, you're able to, to get through a little quicker than typical in this one even if you're only able to attend the evening classes which I like I said is most of them uh, you're still going to be done because of the way we're just running these classes online as much as we can to get done with the training in a, in a quicker window than when when we typically would meeting in person so um, a lot of flexibility with the, with the training online. Um, you know, you can get through quick, you can get through at your own pace. Uh, we've had a couple of families from our first class, uh, which was in April, finish up within a month and actually get licensed and actually get placements, uh, within about a month to, you know, just a little over a month. So really, really awesome, uh, to be able to, meet uh, the needs for our kids and, and to help be there and connect with our, our families along the way. So we're making the most of it and uh, really hope you are able to join us next week when training comes. I think that's all the training stuff. So I want to, I'm really excited to turn it over to one of our foster parents um, and let Olivia Cox tell you a little bit about uh, what it's like being a foster parent. So Olivia, take it away. Hi everyone. Um, my husband and I became foster parents last August. Um, we actually didn't, we started out going through a county and it just didn't feel right to us. 
and someone gave me Pat's contact information and within three minutes on the phone with Pat, my husband and I were like, okay, this is where we need to be. Um, just concerns that we had going through an actual county rather than a private agency. Um, it just seemed right. It was a right fit for us. Um, we started our classes. It was the last week of last May and we were licensed by mid-August. And I think it was 12 days we had a placement. Um, and we had three calls in between that time, but it just didn't work out. Um, so we were placed with a one-year-old little boy and he is wonderful. <laughs> we, he's Aww. still in a home. And we actually have a second placement now. He was a quarantine baby. Um, he has been in our home since March. So things are going really well. Um, one of the biggest, there were so many things that we learned in classes that I'm a person that I grew up in a stable home. I grew up with two wonderful parents. Um, and it was shocking to me, the things that these kids can go through. And it's very sad. And that, in that, those classes, that just made my husband and I more sure that that's what we needed to be doing. And we wanted to help these kids. I wow, that's so real. I love it. I love to hear <laughs> the real life experience. Um, I always say, you know, um, Eric and I are, are living it every day uh, as the people go through the process, but then to, to really be in the trenches, as we like to say, you're, you're, the, you're the reason, you're, you're the real deal, the, you know, what's going on for these kids. And so I sure appreciate hearing your story. That's, that's great. I'm gonna jump in there and talk a little bit about something when one of the common questions I get from people is, well, okay, I, I live in Summit County. What's the difference if I call Summit County Children's Services or Pathway Caring for Children? Of course, I like to start by saying, well, we're the best. We serve children and families the best in Northeast Ohio since 1973. Um, of course, I'm tooting our own horn here with good reason. I've worked at the agency, it'll be 25 years in a couple of weeks. And one of the main differences that I like to talk about is Pathway is able to serve our surrounding counties. So right now we are serving 14 counties that surround uh, the Stark County where our main office is. And so when you become a licensed home with Pathway, you have an opportunity to receive referrals for children all over Northeast Ohio, really. That's one main difference. The second main difference, it's my favorite part, is being a private agency, a little more family oriented, a smaller feel, you know, the more mom and pop feel where um, our caseworkers have less uh, families on their caseload. So, you know, we have people call with um, requests or um, needs where um, that maybe since we're small, we're able to get to your questions a little bit sooner. And of course, um, fulfilling what you need to make the placement and your family work and be a cohesive unit. So that's, that's one of my favorite parts about being a, a private agency is being able to, um, being smaller sometimes means we can be a little more personalized with you. All right, and thank you, Pat, Eric, and Olivia. So we're going to move into the Q&A part of today's webinar and please feel free to use the chat feature when you scroll to the bottom of your screen if anything comes up but we have a couple questions just to go over and the first one up is can you just give us more detail about the kids who come into care maybe their ages um, their backgrounds possibly what trauma they're coming into foster care with? I could start with that one if you'd like. Um, we're receiving between 35 and 50 referrals a week. I'll let that sink in for a second because every time I say that number, I'm just so shocked. Between 35 and 50 referrals a week. 
of children that need homes. I'm just surprised every single time I say that. Um, our children are coming to us from age zero up to 18. We definitely have seen an upswing in younger children, as in newborn from the hospital, sibling groups. We still are definitely have a need for people to take teenagers. But I will tell you that right now, most of our children in care at our agency are under the age of 10 and many of them in a sibling group. So these kids are coming from all walks of life. Sometimes these are kiddos that just need a temporary, short, safe and nurturing place to be while another family member steps up to get ready to have them in their home or maybe mom and dad are having some trouble and they need to work that out and so it's a short-term placement. Other times we're having uh, kids that are looking for more permanency and more uh, potentially a foster to adopt placement. So with the opioid crisis that's still going on in Northeast Ohio, uh, we have received sibling groups um, of a younger nature and sometimes the kids are just there temporary. Um, it, it varies, it varies. Other times, usually due to abuse and neglect for some reason, um, all walks of life though we're seeing where kids can be coming into care. And then the next one is, what are just the basic requirements to become a licensed foster parent? Well, the rule that I, I used to start out with saying, you have to be 21 years of age or older. And that rule has just changed. You now have to be 18 years of age or older. And one parent in the home, if it happens to be a two parent home, has to be able to read and write English. Uh, you can be single. You can be married, you can rent your own home, or you can own a home. There's no stipulation there. We have people that are in apartments. Uh, you just need to be able to be um, flexible and uh, ready to uh, change up the script as, as I'm sure Olivia can attest to. Your day might start out one way and may go another way. So I love when people are open-minded and flexible. Um, there are some criteria you, of course, we do a background check. We do fingerprints for you and we do that all in-house. There's no cost to you. Uh, while that's happening, while you're taking the classes, you're also having a home study. So one of our licensing assessors would come out to your home, uh, talk to you about um, things to keep children safe in your home. Some of it's very basic. Um, other, other things, you know, we, we talk to you, we need a um, evacuation plan, a fire inspection is done of your home. Um, and we, we go over all that with you. We sort of do a step-by-step -step, um, approach so that nothing seems too overwhelming. Uh, Olivia, do you have any input on that process? Yes, Andy was who did our licensing and she was so wonderful. She helped us every day. She would give me tasks to work on throughout that day. And it was very helpful. Um, the home study, I felt personally really intimidated by that. And it was no big deal. It really was no big deal. Um, it, the pay, getting, just getting all the paperwork together, that really only took a, I mean, start to finish everything, probably a couple weeks. And Andy is so helpful. Anything you need, you send her an email and within minutes you have something back. And that was, that's, our experience with pathway in general anything we've needed within if the person that I ask the question to doesn't know the answer they have something back for me within an hour or two which is very helpful <laughs> so I don't know do you have any more questions just as far as the licensing I mean I don't know what else well Olivia, this would be a question for you. What characteristics do you feel that maybe you and your husband have viewed as being really beneficial to just being foster parents? I mean, flexibility for sure, um, but, but anything else that you can think of? Just flexibility, being open-minded. There were things like when we were filling out 
things that we would accept into our home and not accept into our home with Sonia and Andy, there were things that they just really opened our eyes to. And my advice to anyone doing that is just listen to them because they're, I just, for instance, say I said no to someone I didn't want a child on oxygen or a newborn coming home on oxygen. It, what if it's just temporary? What if they're on oxygen for one week? Then you're not getting that newborn placement when it's just a temporary situation. So being open-minded is, I think, huge. And even as far as then the families, once you do get a placement, I think it's so important to just be open-minded and non-judgmental to the, your foster child's family. Because sometimes you think, oh my gosh, how could this happen? How could you let this happen? And that's a hard thing. But you just have to always give them the benefit of the doubt. And that's something that can be a challenge. But I think it's so important. Yes. So how soon after were you licensed did you receive a call for a placement request? Well, it was probably, it was longer than I thought it was going to be. It was, um, I think it was like five days. I had it in my head. I was getting a call that night and I almost had phone anxiety. Like I had my ringer up and with me every single place I went, but it was probably five days. But I, I mean, it, our turnaround, like Pat said, we're getting, 35 to 50 referrals a week. So once we have homes, we need to place those children. They are in need. They need stability right away. And so um, the next question, this one's for Eric, is what, what topics are covered in pre-service and how do they prepare you as a foster parent? Great question. I was just, you know, listening to Olivia and talking about um, kind of mentioning about gaining sympathy for the child's, you know, primary family. We talk a little bit about that. Um, we talk about the effects of, of child abuse and neglect. We talk a lot about trauma and we, we talk a lot about attachment. Um, we, we discuss why kids from trauma have impaired attachment and then we also talk about strategies that you can use to build attachment in the life of your child and attachment is basically trust and so that's a huge word for us throughout training uh how can we build trust and where was this where how has this child not been able to trust anybody in the past and how can we give them those skills now so most of the training is around topics like that like i said we do talk about trauma abuse and neglect um, we talk about brain development, like attachment and things along those, those lines. There's also a CPR and first aid requirement uh, for training. So that's a part of the training as well. Um, but yeah, it, it's a good mix. Uh, it's a really good overview of a lot of different topics related to trauma um, and the different avenues as well, kind of from a practical standpoint of what your life may look like and different people on the team uh, for you and, and for your child. And, uh, all concepts like that. So like I said, it's an overview training of a lot of different things, but we talk a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot about how to give trust to this child that will be placed in your home. Mm -hmm. And then just a follow-up question for that. What kind of support does Pathway give to our foster families? Anyone can answer that. Well, a couple of us could answer that. I'll start off. Um, when you are um, become a licensed home, you are assigned a caseworker, uh, a pathway caseworker, as well as a county caseworker. And you'll see both of them, although you'll most likely more see your uh, pathway caseworker who will come into your home, check on you, check on, you know, really your entire family. And what, you know, what are the needs? What are the problems? What's going good? What's not going good? So you, of course, are able to reach out anytime, 24-7, to reach, if there is a crisis, to reach uh, your worker. And uh, then they, they either need to come out to you or they could talk to you on the phone. Um, we also offer mentoring. 
which um, with the little littles, it's, it's not as much, but as they get a little bit older, you know, it's, it's a great experience for our kids to have someone else that they learn to, to talk to one-on-one, -on -one, to experience some other activities. So we do offer a mentoring program. We offer a, a life skills program too, when the kids are 12 and up. You might be thinking 12, oh my gosh, that's so young to start that. But we start them out, even simple things. Um, you know, even having the confidence to go into a family fast food place and placing your order and, and handing them your money and just to, to get the confidence built up. And then as they get a little older, um, how to sew on a button, how to plan and make tacos. What do you do when you go into Giant Eagle? Where do you start? What do you need to buy? Uh, just some basic life skills that, um, you know, I picture a 16 year old needing to learn how to make the grilled cheese sandwich. And um, then of course, moving on to uh, possible looking ahead to after high school, what are they going to do um, as they graduate from high school? Um, we also offer a one week camp for children. Um, so many of our children being special needs with behavioral or emotional problems, they just really don't fit in great to just your typical day camp. Uh, so we have a week of camp for children eight and up where they get to experience things that um, maybe they wouldn't have had the opportunity to. Um, as Eric talked about trust, there's trust building activities, um, horse riding, painting, swimming in a lake, building a fire, some of the fun summertime things. Um, we also offer for our kiddos um, family events, um, holiday parties. Uh, which we've had a lot of fun. We do a uh, one over um, like the Halloween time and then over the holidays in December, we do something. Uh, May just finished up with um, Foster Parent Appreciation Month. So we usually have a pretty big outing at uh, a restaurant. This year it was a little different, of course, with everyone on um, on lockdown, as we say. We celebrated our foster parents a little different way, but it, it is all about our foster parents. It's It's about you know, everything they do each and every day. Olivia, do you have anything extra to add about the support that you feel you've had? Oh yeah, there's, well, my case, my pathway caseworker is Ed and I love Ed. <laughs> I think he's so wonderful. Um, anything I've ever needed, I call him or I generally call him, but um, he, he's just, so helpful in anything I've ever needed. It's again, like I said earlier, within an hour, he has an answer for me, whatever that may be. Um, for instance, our one-year-old, he started crawling out of his crib just a couple, he was here for probably two months and he was one. So freshly one at that time. So he was way too little to be in a big boy bed. Um, so we, we obviously didn't want him to get hurt crawling out of the crib, but he needed to be in there. So we just went through some options and Ed and our county caseworker, they came up with a plan and it was, it just was so nice to have that second person as support and for any advice, anything along those lines. Great. Thank you. Yeah. For sure. It's great to have a firsthand perspective during all of this so that when uh, we're trying to recruit new foster parents, you can shed light on um, how Pathway interacts with all of our families. So the next question is, does Pathway do adoptions? Yes, we do. We do a foster to adopt. Uh, when you become a licensed home with Pathway, your license is a two-year state of Ohio license that uh, does allow you to foster or foster to adopt. Um, in 2019, we had 21 adoptions, which is a very big number for us. And I'm told for 2020, we'll probably end up with about the same number of adoptions. Um, with the process of foster to adopt, the child's in your home, you're seeing how you know the dynamics of your family works together and then at the about the two-year mark is when the um, county family court usually decides that then the child needs a forever family so if the child's been in your home for at least six months 
and things seem to be going good for you, you, you could be asked, are you interested in fostering to adopt this little one? And, you know, I'll be honest with you, I need people to do both. I need people, I always use this thought of love them in between. And uh, I need some people to, to move on, to just keep them safe and loved and feel um, the bond with you during the temporary time in their life. And then I, of course, need people to take children on as uh, a new forever family for these kids. So yes, we have done quite a few in the past couple of years. So our next question is, can you explain respite care or being a respite foster parent? Yep, respite care, um, another very, very needed um, part of the puzzle that I, um, and when someone says to me, you know, I, I've been thinking about this, I'd like to do it, but I don't think I have enough time. I'm busy, I, I just don't know if I can do it. Respite is like the icing on the cake. Um, you would become a licensed home, go through the process just like a full-time provider, but then you would only do part-time care. And usually that's on weekends, like a Friday to Sunday. Sometimes it's a planful respite. Sometimes there are times there's emergency respite. Um, but it's, it, the kiddos love to go somewhere different. So I always say um, it's like a honeymoon phase. Kids feel happy to go somewhere different and it, it lets you get your feet wet to see how you do with having another child in your home. So the process would be the same. Um, you would go through the entire uh, training and um, have your home study, become licensed, and then you would say, well, you know, I'm just going to do this um, maybe two weekends a month. We work with you on what works best for you. So we're almost at our time, but just wanted to end with the first step in becoming a foster parent is reaching out to Patricia. Her info is on the screen and our pre-service again starts next Thursday, June 18th. And then Eric, what time, what time of the day is that? Thursday the 18th at 5.30 p.m. And so the rest of the pre-service kind of is multiple times throughout the day and multiple days throughout the week, correct? Well, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 5.30 p.m. And there are a couple Wednesday mornings in there. There's also a Saturday in there. But the bulk of the training, Tuesday and Thursday, and you can be done, you know, at your own pace, is kind of as quick uh, as you want, as uh, whatever you're comfortable with. But yep, Tuesdays and Thursdays are the bulk of them at 5.30. All right. And does anyone else have anything to add? Or um, Olivia, just, just your last perspective of like why someone should just do it, just become a foster parent. All right, so we're, we're at our time, um, but we wanna thank everyone for joining us and uh, hopefully we'll see you in our, pre, our virtual online pre-service classes. So thanks for joining us today. All right, bye. Bye. Thank you.